Hey, what's up, comic fans? I'm Troy the Max Extreme. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. He keeps telling he's Ghost Hunter Dave. Just believe him, everybody. <laughs> I know! How many times do I have to say it? <laughs> this is Imperious Rex. Today's show, we'll be going over Garth Annis and Steve Dillon's Preacher. Man, one of the one of the greats. One of the greats. Right? Yeah, you'd say oh, it yeah. is. All that and more on today's episode, so stay tuned for some great show. I guess it's really all subjective. <laughs> So Preacher dropped on AMC a few weeks ago, and it's taken the world by storm. Dropped from the heavens. Drop. Ooh, very good. Like mm -hmm. what you did there. Yes. So we found I've got more. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep, hold on. Keep them in the sack. All right. We'll let them out uh, Genesis style. Yeah. Um, so we thought it would be no more appropriate than to do the actual comic book run, Preacher. It stars the main character, Jesse Custer, who you see on this cover right here. He has a strange girlfriend who you meet. Tulip uh, O'Hare. That's right. And his freaky vampire sidekick, Cassidy. Mate. His mate. His mate. It's one of my probably favorite reads. In fact, I gave this to my dad. It's one of his favorite reads as well. He really likes it. Your dad is a straight up cowboy. <laughs> so he connected Jesse Custer. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, it's oh, white he's on like, rice. Yeah, he's like, this is about me. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what it is. This is what happened before I met your mother. <laughs> Quick intermission Go before ahead. we get really into a deep dive here. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a, a uh, an acknowledgement, a long time coming. Mm -hmm. We had some uh, some a helping hand in the editing chores because yep. we're both busy people, and we like to thank them a lot. Otherwise, these shows wouldn't be coming out as frequently as they do. No, probably wouldn't have uh, come out that week. Yeah. Um, so three people might have been slightly inconvenienced, <laughs> and then they would have been just fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Duke, uh, you read Preacher? No, Dave. I have not read Preacher. Have you seen the show? I have done it. Without, without having any background, what do you think of them? I think that they're very interesting. I think that the comic would be a lot more interesting than the show, though. Interesting. All right. Thanks for keeping it concise. Well, concise is what I do, Dave. And yeah, you should probably check back with me later. We'll, we'll check back with Duke later, <laughs> see if he hears thoughts on things. And those were thoughts that the Duke had about Preacher. Yes, Troy Potter to the max extreme. Those are the thoughts of the Duke. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Preacher... I would say does an amazing job telling big stories and small stories. They go for the grandiose at a lot of points, and a lot of it uh, has a lot of shock value as well. King of shock value here. <laughs> but um, he's like Mark Miller on crack. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. A lot of. Oh my goodness. Anyway, you'll see it if you read it. But there's my favorite arc. I think is salvation. And it's the largest arc, too. I like that one a lot, too. It's kind of near the tail end of the whole Preacher epic. How many volumes total is this? Ten. Or nine. nine it's nine right? total. Yeah. yeah, it's nine total. But I think Salvation, what is that, number Eight? seven? seven. Um, Jesse Custer. The grossest cover <laughs> you will <laughs> ever see. <laughs> Jesse becomes kind of separated. Dude, what do you think of this cover? <laughs> the cover, I think, is bold. It's sexy. It appeals to women as well. As the deranged mind. Yeah. <laughs> Altogether, I think the cover is very effective. Yeah. Right? If you're just walking along the comic shop looking for something a little interesting. Ugh. Oh. Yes, yes, it does definitely have the ick factor. What's that remind? What it reminds me of, in short, is a cold summer's day dancing across the face of a spider monkey on a moonless night. It reminds me of. A wet, hot summer in Nepal. Oh! Oh, it's too late for that, Davy boy. Don't give this guy any ideas. This guy's already got all the ideas. Flat up, <laughs> put a penis on the screen. Flat up what?
One of these on the screen. A little bit of this. What'd you like? Uh, he becomes separated from Tulip and Cassidy, and he becomes like the sheriff of this small town called Salvation. And there he meets an estranged member of his family, and he meets this gross man with a sausage, and you find <laughs> out <laughs> some really gross things about him. And it's... Don't run off and buy the book before we finish the show. <laughs> I mean, we're really selling it here, but... But that it, it's it's one of the lower-key stories that there are out there, yeah, for Preacher, it's... anyway. <laughs> Troy, what's the story of Preacher? Can you give me a synopsis? Sure, I can give you a synopsis. Jesse Custer is a preacher, kind of down on his luck. He's left his old life behind. And near the very beginning of the story, he gets inhabited by a being called Genesis, which you find out is a creation of a demon and an angel copulating. A love child. There you go. You said it. I did it. <laughs> and They that, did it. And that being is like a ghostly infant visage <laughs> and inhabits his body. And with that, it gives him the power of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so when he exudes this power out of himself, it makes whatever... He told this person, like, they, they have, have to, to obey they his, have to, his will, his commands. Yeah, li very literally. Yep. Which he ends up not even using a whole lot. I was going to say, I like this about it because it is, it's a hook of the book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this yeah. preacher can make you do whatever he says. Yeah. It will be the hook of the show. It is, fuck. It's quite the hook. <laughs> it's a hook. <laughs> hook and a half. Duke, play me off. Preacher man, go on, go on, get your hat. Go on, grab your rats, go on, fly in the sky. Nice work, Duke. You expect this to be an every issue thing. Yeah. And it happens a handful of times. Right. And I love that about it, too. Me too. Like, you think they're going to overdo it and run it into the ground. Yeah. But he's such, like, just a stand up guy. Yeah. That, like, he would much rather just fight somebody than, like, yeah, than have to command them and make them obey right. his, his yeah. orders. The ghostly. <laughs> Appearance of John Wayne is a recurring character in this as well. That's why I made mention of the Duke being so appropriate in this episode. <laughs> there you go. It's a great introduction. Well, we need to put that together. Duke, but... if you're not already wearing some sort of cowboy attire, now would be the time. <laughs> cowboy attire? I don't think I have any cowboy attire, Dave. We, we'll wait. <laughs> There's your cowboy attire. Perfect. <laughs> There's also a character called the Saint of Killers in this as well, which is essentially like a Grim Reaper type character. Okay. But he's also a very interesting character that is kind of woven throughout. And a main antagonist in the story, Air Star, a German officer that is... Go ahead. A direct copy of Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> Not a spitting image. Not an image of. Do I look like Clint Eastwood? No, not no. at all. Okay, but um, he comes in and out of the story as well, and the stuff that Jesse puts this guy through is stuff of legend. Oh yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> I don't want even want to say too much because it's, it's utterly hilarious yeah. what happens to him. Oh yeah, he's the foil of the book that just he he means he wants to get his job done. Yeah. He wants to complete the mission. Yeah. And boy, does he go through it hell. <laughs> He's always on their tail, but yeah. he just gets put through the ringer. Yeah. Oh, my God. Some of the stuff they put him through. Wow. I don't... He bites his balls <laughs> off, doesn't it? <laughs> Not just his balls. The whole thing. The, the whole, whole package. thing. <laughs> the whole Frank and beans. Whole That's just on. one thing that happens to him in this. Oof. Duke, what do you think of that? <laughs> what do I think of that? I think you should get your cock and balls chopped off every Tuesday, just for good measure. I know I do. No good. <laughs> no good. No good. Tulip O'Hare? Yep. A strange girlfriend of Jesse Custer from his uh, maybe seedy past? Mmm. Perhaps. And... <laughs> I'm going to guess it is. Yeah. Okay. It very well is. All right. <laughs> and she's a girl that can take care of herself. You better believe it. A good role model for... No. <laughs> not a good role model. <laughs> a but strong She's a very female strong female woman. Figure. Yeah. <laughs> And she gets very fed up with Jesse uh, and his ma machismo mm. throughout the book. Extra machismo, please. Um, the other member of this trilogy, Cassidy, an Irish vampire, quite 
he has quite the arc in the book because you like him a lot at first. Halfway to the end, he maybe he becomes a shitbag. Definitely, maybe he turns into a shitbag. He definitely maybe does. And I Duke love to see that. Place bets. <laughs> shitbag. I think as far as bags of shit go, he is the shittiest shitbag that has ever shat in a bag of shit. With shit. I like his character progression in it a lot, actually. He's, I mean, he's... Because it's not even a progression, it's a degression. Yeah. I have to say. He's a fun best friend. Yeah, you know, exactly. He's like, he's a, the funny character mm -hmm. that is just, just a screw up. Yeah. A drunk. There's that one picture of him, uh, that... There's a picture of him somewhere in history, <laughs> one of the covers, where he's just, he's, he's always got sunglasses on, and he's just fucking covered in blood. Uh, yeah. Because he's a vampire. Mm-hmm. I love it. Great. It's been on the top ten read list of almost every single You Must Read This series since its inception. Absolutely. And with that has come this show on AMC. It's been threatened to become a TV show or a movie right. for quite some time. Yeah. And now they've finally done it. Yeah. Even though, like... This has been in the works in this art incarnation yeah. for years, it yeah. seems like. I remember hearing about it like a, like two years ago, maybe. And like, like years? Yeah, literally two <laughs> years. Yes. That's the least amount of plural, plural years you can yes. <laughs> Before that, it was threatened to be an HBO series. Mm -hmm. And then even so far as they had the arse face makeup. Oh, did and they? It done. And it looks really great. Mm -hmm. Like, almost comic accurate. Yeah. But uh, the... Literal ass to mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the Preacher Show has been out for a couple episodes right now. Um, and I, I, I'm a huge fan. It doesn't follow the comic precisely. But that was even stated by uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg on its creation. Mm -hmm. That we're going to take a little bit of liberties with it. So going into that... Like, you shouldn't be upset that it's not following the comic to a T. And we talked about this in an earlier episode, too, right. that we've seen the first episode. Mm -hmm. um, Cassidy is dead on. Right. Tulip is a, a, a good change in yep. the comic. She's white. The show, she's African-American. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt anything. Yep. And the actress is great in it. I'm not sold on Custer yet. And right. Yeah, I love him in the book, so I hope he, he gets to it. Like, mm -hmm. I would want nothing more than for the actor to really surprise me. Yeah, and what... I think we were talking earlier that uh, that the first few episodes, I don't really think he's actually himself yet. He's trying to be this other person, yeah. having this other life, and he'll eventually get to what you know him as in the books. Very true. Because yeah. like, he's fun-loving. Yeah, this. yeah. You, he's a very charming character. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping they, they get to it sooner rather than later. Yeah. Do you think they're going to bring in some of the really crazy elements of this book? Like, for instance, Saint of Killers. I think, yeah, we will. Because if we're going already, like, playing with the real heaven and hell aspect of this... Yeah, he's not that far-fetched if you're right. already doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do think that we're going to see him. Like, I, I don't know how... I'm going to use the word offensive they're you're going to get, to get yeah. in the show. Being that it's on TV, even though it's on AMC, like, there's a lot of stuff that could really draw up some... Real hate yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for a mass audience. So I don't know how they're going to handle that. E if the show even you know gets that far in its run. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long the show is going to last. I would like to have it last a while, but you never know. So in the spirit of just good original comic books, graphic novels, um, I wanted to bring up Image, uh, Image Comics, which is the publisher of many of my favorite books on mm -hmm. the stands right now. Mm -hmm. They're doing a monthly uh, previews magazine called Image Plus. And in this, there's a Walking Dead storyline, which you can only get here. Mm. And it is Negan's backstory, how he came to be the Negan we all know and love and hate in the Walking Dead <laughs> comics. Um, so it's the, this is the only place to get it until maybe they collect it in trades. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it's a really good magazine because you flip through it and you're like, Jesus Christ, Image produces a lot of good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, if I didn't buy everything, I could just buy Image and, and be happy <laughs> and have enough to read. Yeah, yeah. So this comes out along with previews. It's like two bucks. And it just gives you, it's cool. It gives interviews with creators. It gives um, previews of upcoming books and mm -hmm. stuff. And it's 
It's great. I love it because Image is like one of my favorite publishers right now. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Started with Preacher, wandered to a little bit of Image. Gave you more than what you bargained for today on Imperious Rex. Would you say we bit off more than we could chew? Absolutely not. No, never. I have a very big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and strong teeth. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, that's the show. So join us next week. We give you everything you want to know but didn't know you want to know about comics. I'm Troy to the Max Extreme. T to the Max Extreme is getting crazy. Ghost Hunter Dave. Ghost Hunter Dave. Ghost Hunter Dave. Duke, play, play us out. out. Imperious Rex Show. Imperious Rex Show. Watch it or you'll die. Don't forget to subscribe.